We have already seen a few sentences in the beginning of this, can of this section. We will quickly run through them to catch the continuity. And Savitri too awoke among these tribes that hastened to join the brilliant Savanas chant and you with the beauty you the apparent way acclaim the portion of ephemeral joy. Savitri too awoke among these tribes. Tribes we have already seen in the course of evolution of life right from the beginning, prana. Right from the beginning, Pashu, Pishacha, Rakshasa, Asura, Devas, Siddhas, man, all the things. So it is these tribes which have advanced to the mental status. It is among them Savitri has awoken, that hastened to join the brilliant Samanar's chant. Brilliant Samanar, I mean, in the uh, context of the story as it is going on, is of course the sun god, but I would say that it has a much deeper significance, deeper occult content in it than just the sun god, you see. It is the coming of the avatar who would compel Savitri to come and awake. It is the avatar Ashapati who will come and summon her to do her work, you see. That hasten to join the Samanas chant and live with the apparent ways of the apparent, uh, sorry, and live with the beauty of the apparent way, acclaim their portion of ephemeral joy, their, of course, all those tribes. Mm -hmm. Means Savitri has completely accepted the conditions of the evolution at that point of time and her work now begins from that point onward. Again to the eternity when she came, this is a clear statement that Savitri belongs to the Supreme. Our Savitri's coming here is the incarnation of the Supreme Shakti herself. Akin to the eternity when she came. Akin, why? Because she has taken the mortal birth. Even in the mortal birth, she is akin. She is connected with the eternity when she came. No power she took in this small happiness. In other words, even in this world of smallness, littleness, she is always in the joy, happiness of the eternal world from which she is coming here. No power she took means she is always with that joy. She, a mighty stranger in the human field. Obviously for us, she will look like a stranger here. The embodied guest within made no response. The Supreme Savitri, the Divine Savitri, who has taken the mortal birth, she is seated in her soul there and she is doing her work from within and therefore she does not take part in all the outer activities at all, you see. It is the human Savitri who... You have to see Savitri in three states. Basically, you have to see Savitri in three states. Savitri is the mortal being as a human. Then the Savitri within her, the soul of Savitri, and the counterpart of the soul in the transcendent, the Supreme Savitri. So we have actually three uh, levels of Savitri, so to say, the mortal Savitri, the immortal Savitri, in the mortal Savitri, and beyond all of them, the transcendent Savitri, the Supreme Savitri, in her realm of uh, Satchitananda, or even beyond that. The call that wakes the leap of human mind, the call that wakes the leap of human mind, now, because she has taken this mortal birth, she also goes by the call of the beings who are awakened by the thing, man, etc., etc. Its checkered eager motion of pursuit, its fluttering huge illusion of desire, visited her, visited her heart like a sweet alien note. Well, it comes here because she is already awake in a certain sense and therefore it is an alien note for her, see, that call. In other words, she gets up early morning, so to say, and starts her work, her activity, her day begins, her action in the field starts happening now here. But she is participating in them always with that consciousness. The divine consciousness is never lost in her while she is still working in the human consciousness. Visited her heart 
take a sweet alien note times message of brief light was not for her this one of the most dramatic lines also is seen in her there was the anguish of the gods imprisoned in our transient human mold the deathless conquer the death of time and there is a little complication here and uh, i think uh, maybe at least you can point out the complication if you not resolve the complication the complication is in her heart there was the anguish of the god imprisoned in our transient human mold now who is imprisoned <laughs> who is imprisoned is yeah, yeah. are these gods who are imprisoned or it is the anguish which is imprisoned you see no the god gods are imprisoned yeah well that is that is uh, in our mood we have the god uh, involved this, but they are already within us it means and they are trapped maybe we have a uh, anguish of god but we have the god first we have the god before the well actually most of the most of the uh, authors who have written about it they say it is the gods who are imprisoned yeah. uh, i don't know <laughs> i don't know see the, 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 if the gods are already imprisoned within us then the, the question of their anguish so to say see anguish is something to strive to do something out of see i would have to say it is the anguish that is imprisoned within us the anguish of the gods which is imprisoned within us the gods have some concern for us the gods are worried about our future about the prospects we should come here they are there in the transcendent in the in their own world and yet they are helping man they are helping everybody in their own manner they are concerned about thing that is the anguish they have it is that anguish which is imprisoned in the human mode of savitri you see completely different meaning but yeah yeah see i mean <laughs> yeah we are saving savitri the, the, the anguish of the gods imprisoned is a very big orchestra not the, see the, the what is it that got them uh, trapped in mind in, in human beings you need some kind of a background history on the getting trapped in the human mold for them to be imprisoned but the gods suddenly do have concern about the evolutionary process they are helping in their own manner from the world they are helping man and promoting man's activities so that he makes spiritual progress so that is their concern that is their anguish that is their desire that is their job so to say also of the gods and therefore in her there and savitri is definitely carrying that anguish in her to take man forward to build up a new future for him you see in her there was the anguish of the gods imprisoned in our transient human mold the deathless conquered by the death of king now deathless here stands for savitri of course now conquered with the death of things because she has taken a mortal birth she has accepted the mortality all the circumstances of mortality and she has to work out whatever she has to work out through this mortality she always being deathless she always be see this line the deathless conquered with the death of thing well uh, does not really go well with gods gods are immortal not deathless gods are immortal not deathless they become deathless if they take birth in man in the mortal world there is a difference between they being immortal and they being deathless actually <laughs> no <laughs> actually na uh, uh, in the possibilities of a new race the gnostic race the, the future race as being worked out by shemindu and the mother it is the deathlessness which is important and not immortality Yes, exactly. Because we are still alive. Not immortality. You have taken birth in the mortal world. You have to become deathless here in the mortal world. 
not immortal you see immortality means you kind of get frozen to a certain type of activity and don't make really progress deathlessness makes you progress also continuously further deathlessness means also if you want to give up you can give up also you see you are neither bound by death nor bound by deathlessness a vast nature of joy had once been hers well this is again an indication that she has come from eternity vast nature brahat prakriti vast means brahat super nature joy had once been hers well before she has entered into the mortal world and taken the mortal birth she was the denizen of the celestial world of heaven and she was always there enjoying all the possibilities of supernature there you see she was happy there but long could keep not its gold heavenly hue gold heavenly hue her deathless her superior nature you see her gold heavenly hue but could not long could not uh, but uh, long could not its gold heavenly hue in other words because she has taken the mortal birth it is that heavenly character which is there is not able to assert assert itself here always permanently it has to accept the conditions of mortality the circumstance of ignorance and death and suffering and fate and then make make a move forward therefore long could keep not is gold heavenly you because she has to accept this thing she has to work out whatever has to be worked out in this circumstances or stand upon this brittle earthly base her nature could not stand upon earthly base now this is an important line important statement or to the earthly base base is brittle the cosmic foundation itself is not firm is not powerful enough to hold the possibilities of the spirit in it now or stand upon this brittle earthly who is going to make it strong firm remove its brittleness who is going to remove that thing it is the divine himself who will come here as an avatar and prepare the base for savitri so that her earthly base becomes strong firm for her activity for her action you see that is why you have first the coming of ashwapati as the avatar ashwapati comes here he does three things basically he explores all the cosmic dimensions of course he liberates himself first from the mortality in which he has taken the birth his soul is free his spirit is free now he can go and move anywhere he likes so first is the individual tapasya of individual yoga of ashwapati which makes him free now with that freedom he can now move anywhere in the cosmic worlds all the worlds he is now climbing up one above one above that is what we have got in book 2 he is climbing up now he is climbing up and then ultimately of course he go to meet the divine mother there and pray to her please come down here so this is the thing but before that while he is climbing up he has already established in the transcendent the new creation for which he has taken the birth now in order to bring down that new creation she has to take the birth she has to come down here as savitri and do the work you see here. and in order that she does that work here he has to prepare the base the earthly base that earthly base is when he is going now from plane to plane through all these worlds world above worlds he is leaving behind him his presence and power his shakti his astitva he is leaving behind everywhere yes i am here 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 now super says he and it is that now become the solid foundation the support the aadhar for savitri to do her work or stand upon this brittle earthly way that earthly base is now made really firm solid so that she can do her work you see without ashwapati's yoga savitri is coming here has no meaning really in fact the whole thing will get crushed if she comes directly like that you see 
to spiritual base is important. That occult foundation has to be built. That luminous occult foundation is important, you see. A narrow movement on time's deep vision, lies for thy littleness, deny the power, the proud and conscious wideness and the bliss. She had brought with her into the human form the calm, the light that weighs one soul to all, the key to the flaming doors of ecstasy. So what is the key to the flaming doors of ecstasy? The joy of the luminous, bright, the blazing gates. What, what is the key? The key is wedding of all souls with each other. Oneness of souls. Each soul is identified with the other soul, you see. So she has identified herself with each and every soul. That becomes the key for her now. And therefore the doors get opened out. The doors of ecstasy, it is not door, doors of ecstasy, of every kind of door. Happiness, joy, power, light, knowledge, everything, flaming, blazing, bright, diamond, lustrous, you see. It is they, they open out when that oneness is founded. Now, we have already seen earlier, of course we are <laughs> going back and forth, but we have seen in our classes earlier that one soul to all, Ashwapati had the same problem. Ashwapati had the same problem. In book three, Canto three, he has established a new creation. And let me, I think I got a reference of that, let me see. 88.13, we'll see, 88. See, the problem is, Ashwapati has established a new creation in the transcendent, in the house of the spirit. And that has been brought down here. But the conditions are so different of what is there and what is here. And how can they become really become compatible to each other. This is so beautiful, marvelous, lustrous and that kind of a thing. And here, all ugliness, dirtiness, darkness, etc., etc., etc. How can that really happen? So there is a sort of an incompatibility apparently for us. That how can that thing come here and dwell here on this earth? So that was the kind of a dilemma. And therefore he says, Alien now seem the dim far universe, dim far universe, the new creation which he has established in the house of the spirit. Self and eternity alone were true. So what do I got there? Only Atman and Brahman. Only self and eternity. They are only there, nothing else. No creation, no universe, no cosmos, nothing. Only that. Then memory climbed to him from the striving plane from below. From the struggling creation. Ashwapati remembers, yes, what I have done for? I have done all these things for this. Then memory climbed to him from the striving plane, bringing a cry from one's loud, cherished thing. What is the cry? And to the cry as to his own lost call, a ray replied from the occult supreme. Yes, there is a cry from here. He has created that thing, there is an aspiration, there is an invocation and the reply from above. For even there, the boundless oneness dwells. Boundless oneness dwells. This, this oneness is not conditional. That it will be only there and not here. It is boundless. It is not conditional, let me see. It has no bounds, so to say, you see. And therefore, what is there? That should also be here. Yeah, after all, it is oneness. It is Brahman. This is also Brahman, but in a different manner. It does not mean that it cannot come here. So it is only a question of now how to match these two Brahmans, that and this, you see. Boundless oneness, that is all this is here. Now here also, and that is the key which Ashwapati had discovered, in oneness. And who is going to open that lock, that door now? Savitri, the Divine Mother. He goes and prays. Look, it is there. You are also here. So what is the difficulty? What is the problem? Please come down and do your work now, you see. That, that, now, you see. that dim far universe, is that our universe? Entire cosmic manifestation. But he talks about 
alien now seemed that dim far universe ha yeah, mean the boy the universe which he had created the oh, far see ashwapati has created a new world that is calling it the universe so the new creation is that dim far yeah here he is using this word universe for that creation which he has ma- made there in the house of the spirit which he has established which he has established in the house of the spirit that's the new creation ashwapati yeah. created Alien now seemed that dim, far, you know. See, because there was all that dazzling, beautiful, lustrous perfection everywhere, perfection everywhere. Then what about this place? So when he's coming back, then he says, "Look, yes, it is all there, but I am also coming." Memory, that is important. He remembers that thing. See, that touch is not lost. Now here also we have got. See, the calm delight that wets one soul to all. that is the oneness oneness of each and every soul if you identify yourself with every soul then that become the key to the flaming dose of ecstasy hmm that's not easy that is the real uh, brotherhood bhava okay fraternity mm-hmm. so fraternity is basically the soul fraternity not the vital not the physical not the mental ideas no the calm delight that wets one soul to all. the key to the flowing dose of ecstasy mm-hmm. flaming dose of ecstasy mm-hmm. earth grain that needs a sap of pleasure and tears rejected the undying rapture boon offered to the daughter of infinity now again you have got here daughter of infinity the divinity of savitri is again asserted she already in this six seven sentences we are told savitri is the divine shakti who has taken the mortal birth daughter of infinity devakanya as vyasa says she is the devakanya the daughter of gods god the word savitri itself means the daughter of savitra or sun god She is the daughter of Savitri, Sun God. Her passion flower, as grain that needs a sap of pleasure and tears. Well, that is the way in which we 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 do not really we cannot really enjoy only pleasure. We need a bit of tart, we need of uh, cruelty, harshness also. You see, to enjoy sweetness, you see, as grain, the grain. Well, I mean, grain as you got uh, on on the trees. the grains of the tree as you you cut along the grain grain does not necessarily mean uh, grain of rice or wheat or grain of sand here see grain means uh, that character that nature that quality is a swabhava earth grain that needs sap of pleasure and tears see both we need both pleasure and tears to live to survive we need both death and life we need both love and hate we need both ignorance and knowledge you see both of them all of them are required for us otherwise we don't survive ignorance and knowledge death and life pain and pleasure all these things are required for us to be well that is the grain of earth that is the grain of earth you see we live survive on that rejected and dying wrapped this bone well when she brought the original boon rapture from her world here earth was not ready sorry we are not ready it was rejected thrown back thrown back because you are bringing only pleasure you please bring some pain also in that <laughs> offer to the daughter of infinity, uh, infinity a passion flower of love and do she gave she earth earth gave to the daughter of infinity to savitri her passion flower of love and do passion flower of that mother's name silence that flower is it or the, the the passion is the crown which was put the crown of thorns which was put on christ's head when he was carrying the cross is it we need to carry 
a heavy mahogany cross on the back and climb up and get hung on that, you see. That is our condition, you see. Our passion flower of love and doom, Shigi. Well, this is what the earth has offered to Savitri. This is what the earth has offered to the bringers of God's word here. Now, this is, of course, an allusion to Christ's passion. But it is directly related to Savitri's work. In fact, perhaps it is uh, uh, much deeper than the passion of Christ. See, Christ had taken the burden on him to essentially humanize mankind at that time. It was brutal, it was barbaric, that kind of a thing, you see. To humanize, in fact, that is what Christ's avatar who is, Christ, he to say in his aphorism, his mission was to humanize Europe. Savitri's passion flower is of a much deeper sense. She is going to tackle directly the problem of death here itself. Not suffering humanity, but deeper than that. And when death is conquered, when death is made the instrument of the spirit, then with the transformation of death also gets transformed falsehood. It is, it is death who supports falsehood. So if death is conquered, automatically falsehood also goes away with that, you see. And then true love, true beauty, true joy can manifest in his creation. Her passion flower of love and doom, she gave, she earth. In vain now seemed the splendid sacrifice. What she had done is going to be of no avail because earth is rejecting it. Earth is rejecting what had come from the savior of this world. She is rejecting that, you see. Therefore, in vain now seemed the splendid sacrifice. The splendid sacrifice in vain now seemed the splendid sacrifice. Sacrifice, who sacrifice? Savitri's mortality. Savitri has sacrificed her divinity, her royalty, her Aishwarya, her spiritual greatness, all that she has sacrificed and taken the mortal birth in this littleness, this ignominy of death-bound creation she has accepted. That is the sacrifice she had made. But the sacrifice of her seems to be of no avail because Earth is not ready. It is the base is brittle. Earth is not ready. And therefore, her work, as if it is not going to avail anything, to her. a prodigal of a rich divinity, her rich divinity, Savitri's rich divinity, rich in every respect, richness of joy, richness of beauty, richness of truth, richness of love, knowledge, everything rich. Rich divinity, prodigal, abundant. She can freely give without counting any gain or loss. She gives. Because her divinity is inexhaustible, and howsoever you might pour anything out of it, it is not going to get exhausted. Prodigal of a rich divinity, herself and all she was, she had lent to men. What is she required? What is? What a wonderful sacrifice she had done. She has given everything to men, then to men, herself and all she was, you see, all she was, she had given to men, hoping her greater being to implant that heaven might native grow on mortal soil. What for she has given? Her giving, her sacrifice is basically for this purpose, that heaven might native grow on mortal soil. That is the entire objective of her mission, of her avatarhood, of her taking the mortal birth. And therefore, she is pouring out everything from her, completely, prodigal. Prodigal, of course, I've got a kind of a parable reference to biblical story, story of the parable. But this is much richer than that, you see. 
you don't spend away and then come back to your father first of all it's not that rich divinity it is inexhaustible it can keep on supplying furnishing whatever is required greater being to implant you see greater being uh, again he is already making those big suggestions greater being man has come up to this point savitri awoke among these tribes that is not sufficient a greater being than that has to come hoping her greater being to implant that heaven might native grow on mortal soil well all this in the face of the rejection from earth earth which needs the sap of pleasure and tears you see <laughs> earth needs, that heaven might native grow on mortal soil beautiful line that heaven might native grow in mountain soil <laughs> this is an anapasya that heaven is i am might native that is anapast you grow i am on mountain soil again i am i am but there is a difficulty there is a genuine problem Heart is it to persuade earth may just change? <laughs> habits die really in us. You see, our worst habit, our worst habit is to die. We keep on dying, 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 dying. That is our worst habit, and that worst habit has to change. You see, but it is difficult to change. And hard is it to persuade earth may just change? Mortality bears ill. the eternal touch yes he comes here to help you go away we are not interested in you it is too much for us it fear the pure divine and tolerance of that assault of ether and of fire there is the inherent psychological vital fear in us if that greatness comes here i'll get crushed i'll be nowhere you see that assault of ether and of fire ether akash and agni if they come here and invade us will be nowhere so we kind of throw them back again and again you see it fear the pure divine intolerance you see intolerance it doesn't care about what you are it is pushing itself constantly it fear the pure divine intolerance that a soul to be turned of fire it mamas at his sorrowless happiness All must with hate repel the light it brings. It trembles at its naked power of truth and the might and sweetness of its absolute void, and the might and sweetness of its absolute void, might and sweetness, might, samarthya, shakti, sweetness, madhurya. It, it, it and might and sweetness is absolute void. It is going to change at all. It, it trembles. It is naked power of truth and the might and sweetness of its absolute void. We cannot. You see, the divine word comes here. We are not able to bear its power capacity. We throw it away. We run away from it. It is so powerful. You see. What did you say? Might things. Like might is samarthya, shakti. Samarth here. Samarth means I am powerful. I am strong enough. S A M A S A M A Y A R T H A. Samarth, Samarth, Samar. S A M A R T H Y A. Samarth here. Samarth. I am capable of doing things. I am strong enough. I am powerful enough. Samarth here. Yes. i can handle that sort of a thing madhurya madhurya madhur sweet flowing yeah yeah ani the other side hard is it to persuade earth nature's chain mortality bears ill eternal touch it fear the pure divine intolerance of that assault of ether and of fire it mamas It is sorrow, it is happiness. Almost with hate, repel the light it brings. 
it trembles in this naked power of truth and might and sweetness with absolute voice well i will say this is not too bad in the sense that in the sense that the way christ was treated was much harsher than that the crown of thorn piercing his limbs tying him the knot of the uh, uh, nailing him on the cross and all that kind of a thing it was a real real brutal. physical suffering you see brutal, brutal absolutely you see yeah. that is why humanized the europe christ on the cross was to humanize europe you see europe the barbaric europe of that time the christ christ mission was to humanize europe why europe he didn't born in europe he no. born in uh, palestine <laughs> well it is it is a post divine incarnation but that was required in the immediate context for the further history of evolution of earth to humanize to make europe more civilized No, I don't agree with you. It didn't come only for you. I am not saying it myself. This is shape and lose of her as well. Because maybe I didn't understand. No? Europe is identified with Christianity. Even now, Christianity is spread in Europe. Mostly in Europe. Mostly in Africa. Africa and Europe. If you want. After no, 2000 years, now it's uh, like... She even does say the crucifixion of Christ the four great events in the history of creation in you know, the history of world oh, that was not that was not as barbaric as europe four great events in the history of evolution yeah okay but 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 europe you have no idea about that very question your question world but see i mean you take even the simple case the way after the battle of troy the siege of troy when hector was killed he was tied to the chariot and his dead body was taken around three times in the arena you see it is brutality you see it is lack in total psychic sense of values of a noble kind at all you see so it is that uh, yeah it's so bad you, you can't even imagine those scenes you see and uh, later on in the entire history we got so many instances of that kind you see even even to a large extent i will say giving to socrates hemlock a cup of hemlock to drink and all that see socrates he was offered he was given how did he die he was given a death sentence and he had to drink a cup of hemlock hemlock is what a poison yeah. and drink that you see he had to drink that in spite of his sagely nature his uh, values of philosophy and all that kind of a thing see it, it, even in a civilized society like athens this happened you see in those days you see and later on of course many other events were there you see even even uh, 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 the gladiators <laughs> hard is it to persuade or to change mm-hmm. mortality bears ill eternal stand it fears the pure divine intolerance of the result of it and of fire it mama said is sorrowless happiness it mama said is sorrowless happiness no tinge of sorrow at all there and it is not happy it is not happy with that almost with hate repels the light it brings that it uh tell it touch first it earth nature stains yeah the eternal touch detailed stuff now this it is different than this it no huh? yeah <laughs> ah 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 mortality is simple yeah. this is earth nature earth nature <laughs> this is the mortality this is earth nature and this it is uh, yeah. eternal stuff it trembles again that mortality and the might and sweet is of its absolute for its again this is <laughs> different you see of truth now hard is it to persuade earth is it seen there is of course a big lecture given by narad in the book of faith 
on this topic to the Queen Mother. And maybe you can see them, some of them quickly, you see. 108.30. In fact, we'll read from, uh, from uh, the whole passage. He who save himself lives bare and calm. Now that is the nature of the Savior. Savitri, in fact, that is what we have seen here also. He who save himself lives bare and calm. He who save the race must share his pain. Well, she participates in the human nature. This he shall know who obeys that grandiose earth. The great who came to save the suffering world and rescue of the time, shadow and, law, and the law must pass beneath the yoke of grief and pain. They are caught by the wheel that they had hoped to break. In the karma, in the cycle of creation, on their shoulders they must bear man's load of faith. Man lifted at the bottom of his faith, that is not sufficient. The Savior has to do that thing, you see. Favors, riches, they bring, in fact, is what he got. Rich divinity, Savitri has brought, no? Heaven's riches they bring, the suffering count the prize, or they pay the gift of knowledge with their lives. The son of God, God, the son of man. So Savitri is son of God, actually, here. Son of God, born the son of man, has drunk the bitter cup. Oh, God is that. The debt, the eternal oath to the fallen kind, his will has bound to death and struggling life that yearns in vain for rest and endless peace. Now is the debt paid, wiped off the original score. So that is what Savitri's work would mean. And then further down, yeah, the eternal suffers in human form. This is exactly the description of Savitri. Jetana suffers in a human form. He has signed salvation testament with his blood. This of course refers to Christ, but this is for all these sons of God, saviors. He has opened the doors of his undying being. The deity compensates the creature's claim. The creator bears the law of pain and death. He has given his life and light to balance your, the dark account of mortal ignorance. Well, that's what Savitri has to do. Let's go back to further. 109.1. Exactly the same. Hard is it to persuade earth nature's change. 109.1. Hard is the world demons heavy task. So Savitri has come here. He is depicted here as the world demon. Hard. He rewarded him as heavy term. The world itself becomes his adversary. His enemies, the beings, he came to save. This is exactly the description of Christ, of course. Savitri does not face that way, but it is that. Those he would save are his antagonism. His world is in love with his own ignorance. His darkness turns away from the Savior life. His darkness turns away from the Savior line, it gives the cross in payment for the crown. So she has brought the cross, the passion flower she has been offered to see. And then, 100.9, a greater power must come. A, a greater, 100.9, same, same passage. 100, 100, 109.9, a greater power must come a larger light. This is what Ashwapati was saying. Sorry, Narada was saying. A greater power must come. Well, this is what we have here. A greater power has come here. And she has to undergo through all these things. Greater power must come. A larger light. This is the larger light. The largest light. Prasya Jyoti. 
hard is it to persuade earth nature's change, infiltrating on the high the abysms law, on the high she has come from the supernal world, see, and <laughs> the abysms law. He sallies with his mad heaven's messengers. Now this is of course a general statement, but entirely in the context of Savitri, who is now a messenger also. He sallies with his mad heaven's messenger. His thorns of fallen nature are the defense. He turns again the savior hands of grace. Who is it? Infitting on the high abysms law, it sallies. Who it? Previous line. Mortality is. Mortality. Yes, it. It sallies his mire, heaven's messengers. His thorns of foreign nature are the defense. Well, the rose is, of course, a very beautiful flower, so lovely, full of beauty and all that. And there are five types of roses, five qualities of roses, rose of love, rose of joy, etc., etc., all that thing. But they had to be protected with thorns. Thorns are their protection. Infiting the high the vision's law, his sallies, his mire, heaven's pressure, his thorns of fallen nature are the defense. It turns again the severe hands of grace. It made the sons of God with death and pain. A glory of lightning traversing the earth to see there are some thoughts feeding, darkened by ignorant mind. They are work betrayed. They are good to evil turn. They are work betrayed. Well, it was betrayed <laughs> during his own lifetime, in the case of Christ. They are good to evil turn. He brought love for humanity. And that love became the instrument of inquisition. Inquisition, you see. They are good to evil turn. The cross, their payment, for the crown they gave. Only they leave behind a splendid name. So what remains behind is only the name Christ. A fire has come and touched men's hearts and gone. If few have caught flame and reason to greater life, well, only those who are kind of ready inwardly, they profit by the appearance of the avatar and make progress to see him. If few have caught flame, flame of spiritual progress of aspiration and reason to greater life, to unlike the world, she came to help and say, obviously she is too unlike. She is of a divine nature, a different kind. Her greatness weighed upon its ignorant breast. Is of the world. Ignorant breast. And from its deep chasm, well, a dire return, a portion of its sorrow, struggle, fall. This is what happens to you. This is the reply, a response to a light world she came to help and save her greater darkness, her greatness weighed upon the ignorant brain, and from its deep chasms felt a dire return, a portion of his sorrow, struggle for to live with grief, to confront with, to confront death. On her road, the martyr's lot became the immortal share. To live with grief, to confront death on her road. Now, this is a complete description. Well, let us read that thing further. We'll see that thing again. Thus, trapped in the gin of earthly destinies, awaiting her odious hour, abode, outcast from her in born felicity, Accepting 
life obscure terrestrial road hiding herself even from those she loved the god had greater by a human fate a dark for knowledge separated her from all of whom she was the star and stay too great to impart the peril and the pain her uh, in her torn depths she gave the grief to come as one who watching over men left behind takes up the load of an unwitting rain harboring the foe whom with her heart she must feed unknown her heart unknown the doom she faced on helm she must force it and dread and dare well let us read this in again now just trapped in the gin of earthly destinies gin of the earthly destiny gin snare trap is it all right gin <laughs> how does he say how does he uh, he put uh, something uh, like net net the net 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 net, net. net. like a fishing net Oh, a fisher net. No, it's not net. No, it's not net. No, it's not net. What is it exactly? Gin. Gin is a is a trap, snare, snare. See, basically, uh, uh, again in the medieval days, in the feudal days, and all that thing, the big landlords and all that thing, you know, they used to have big farms and uh, agricultural uh, the products and all that. Now, the laborers, the poor people, the hungry people. Would come and steal away some food, something from the farm. You see, in order to stop that, they had produced, they had invented some kind of a trap so that you can catch them and beat them <laughs> and drive them away. You see, gin, the thin, strong wires by which you catch the person, hold him. And uh, even thrashing or whatever is required. Like you catch peacocks and hares. Yeah, that is birds. But now in the in the in the medieval days, this is what they were doing for the laborer, for the poor people, for the hungry people. You see, because they would come and steal from your farm. But phys- physically, how was this gin? Which material? Met- metal, some metal wire mesh. Yeah. Yeah. Metal trap. Yeah, metal like trap. Now in the fields, you have. Uh, thin wires and you catch birds yeah. in metal metal metal, metal. Yeah, yeah yeah you have never seen our dogs were caught yeah but uh, for human no i never see for human yeah. well uh, the, the, what the dictionary what the dictionary says is this one a trap for catching small mammals consisting of a noose of thin strong wire You see, they are like this. Our yeah. dogs, strong wire. Yes. In the fields, yeah. yeah. Cut them loose. Yes, we have to go cut them loose with a fire cutter. Oh. They didn't come home. Anymore. Just trapped in the gin of earthly destiny. So that is the kind of a trap snare which is to catch them. You see, just trapped in the gin. Now, of course, the common uh, use of the gin in a little different sense is ginning machines. ginning machine you remove the seeds of the cotton separate cotton and the seeds so that is what the ginning machine does means you trap the seeds and throw them away and take the cotton out that is what the ginning machine does you see <laughs> so it is also kind of a trap for the seeds of the cotton yeah. ginning machine was seen also perhaps no mm. how the cotton cotton is always going to be a seed and then uh, cotton seed so you have to remove the seed Mm. that is done by the ginning machine just trapped in the gin of earthly destiny awaiting her odious hour so she is awaiting now the word awaiting is important as if she is expecting as if it has to happen as if this is a must awaiting her odious hour about savitri lived awaiting because she already has the full knowledge of what is going to happen on a particular day savitri has been told by narad look 
Savitri, you are going to marry Satyavan, but this day returning, 12 months afterwards, this day returning, Satyavan must die. And she is awaiting that hour of the death of Satyavan. 106.146. Well, we'll read the previous sentence also. In one brief year, when this bright hour flies back and perches careless on a branch of time, the sovereign glory ends heaven lent to work. The sovereign glory, that is Satyavan. The sovereign glory ends heaven lent to earth. The splendor vanishes from the mortal's sky. Heaven's greatness came, but was too great to stay. That is what Narada is telling. And then he is concluding, Twelve swift wing months are given to him and her. This day returning, Satyavan must die. And Savit is awaiting for the audience hour. Savit is awaiting for that hour, you see. This is tremendous, you see. Here we have got here. Already made everything very precise. In one brief year, when this bright hour flies back, this bright hour, he is making an announcement on a particular day, and it is a bright hour. <laughs> something is worse, something glorious is kind of implied in what is going to happen, you see. Therefore, it is a bright hour. Also, it is a bright hour because Narad is, going, is making this prophecy around noon time. Midday, he goes away back to his paradise at noon. Still, he comes early morning, 8:30 or so. Then they have got a rendezvous for a long time meeting, and then at 12 o'clock noon he goes back. So that bright hour, that noon. So bright hour is already means the time is fixed. Also, this day returning, the day on which he is making the statement, this day returning, given 12 swift eight months. So, the hour is fixed, the day is fixed, the year is fixed, completely. Kshana, Muhurta, Samatsara, all these things are fixed already, you see, in the calendar of destiny that Satyavan must die. The Mava and Savitri meets, and the place to be together, this has to happen. Because it is in that the bright hour really begins. The new creation starts from that, you see. So he is ex extremely precise, this bright hour, this day, this year. Now, just trapped in the gin of earthly destiny, awaiting. You see, this word awaiting is very important in that sense. Her ordeals ever, because she has the foreknowledge, accepting life's obscure terrestrial robe. Well, she has taken the human, uh, uh, human life here, hiding herself even from those she loved. Hiding herself even from those whom she loved. The Godhead greater by a human fate. Now, this is important again, hiding, you see, the, 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 the uh, first canto, rather the second section now of the first canto, is a kind of a flash forward. What is going to happen in future? All the events which are going to occur later on are kind of summarized, described rapidly in the second section here itself. And that is what we are saying, back and forth, if you read Savitri, you get the connection there, you see. It's a flash forward, not flash backward. It is forward, it's a future, you see. And therefore, people say that Savitri uh, is plunging in the middle of the story by describing this, plunging directly in the middle of the story. Ex media, ex media, you see. That is what people say. Well, in a way it is true. But I will say that Savitri begins with the beginning. Savitri really big. It is not plunging in the middle of the story that Narada, etc., etc., are brought straight over here. It is not that. Savitri is, the story of Savitri begins with the beginning. 
we have seen the first section already how things have happened and here what is going to happen is not kind of foreseen but it is already present in the transcendent all that is going to happen here is already present in the Yes, Sabbath will come, this will happen, this will happen, Narada will come, etc. It is already kind of foreseen there. The working out of the events and details have been already fixed there. Now they have to simply roll out in the passage of time here in the earthly process. So this is basically, in that sense, this story is in fact narrated in the transcendent that, well, Savitri will develop like this, like this, means the epic Savitri will develop. And it will unfold here, you see. So he is already seeing that thing here. Awaiting, etc., etc., are already from that angle. Yes, Savit will take mortal birth, Savit will do this thing, Savit will find Satyaman, Narada will come, Narada will tell. All that thing is already kind of written up there, you see. And it is, means the story is already inscribed in the transcendent. It has to be worked out now in the terrestrial dimensions and that is what we have now from the next book onward you see. So the first two cantos, Savitri symboled on, I mean epic Savitri symboled on and the next canto, the issue form the complete background of what is in the mind of the Supreme as far as Savitri's work is concerned and I will call that the, that is the real beginning. That is the beginning of beginnings, you see. What is there in the mind of the Supreme, so to say. How he is going to work out the details, they are already there, you see. Therefore, I call it as a beginning of beginnings, you see, real. Not in the middle of the story, you see. Although it looks that we have got Nara here, we have got uh, other things coming up here. It's not like that at all, you see. In other words, the epic Savitri as a poem, has a continuity of the entire description. These two cantos, first two cantos of Savitri, give the entire background, so to say, who is Savitri, etc., etc. And I call them as the introduction to Savitri, the beginning of Savitri. Prolego menon, you see. Prolego. Prologue. Prologue. You speak before the whole thing happens, you see. So these two cantos form the prologue menon of Savitri, you see, or what we are doing, you see. Hiding, even herself. Now this is, a, we'll refer again, uh, the text here. Hiding herself, even from those she loved. Savitri knows what is going to happen one year after the marriage. In the forest she knows that, the, but she, she has not revealed that secret to anybody at all, not even to her husband, that one year after marriage she will die. Nobody, nobody, nobody knows more than me. Now that is the tremendous capacity of a woman to hold back that thing in her soul and not utter a single word because she knows that uttering a single word is going to spoil the entire story. Is it? going to spoil the entire story. She has that capacity, that power, and that is a tremendous yogic capacity she already has. That is the divine Savitri herself can have that thing up there. Therefore, she is not going to reveal. Hiding herself even from those she loved. Let us read some of those passages. 115, 19. Well, this is, this is the beginning of the book of yoga, Savitri's book of yoga. And the background is, of course, in the first canto of the book of yoga. Narada has already told what is going to happen. Still veiled from her was a silent being within Savitri. He is in a dilemma. See, this is, this is happening. Narada has made the announcement. And now she goes and starts staying in the hermitage along with Satyavan and her parents and uh, her parents-in-law and all that. But she is also within herself constantly counting the number of days remaining for that great event of Satyavan's death. 
she is trying to get some help she is human savitri in full human form capacity and she does not know what is going to happen how things are going to shape how she is going to face that moment she has absolutely no idea at all at that point she is looking for some help here some help there some help there within but there is no answer there is no response at all therefore still wait from her was a silent being within who is there within herself who sees life drama pass with unmoved eye suffer the sorrow of the mind and heart and bears in human brain the world and pain a glimpse or flashes came sometimes some idea comes the presence was hidden only a violent heart and passionate will were pushed in front to be the beautiful tomb defenseless nude bound to her human lord they had no means to act no way to save they she controlled that moment she was still to them the child the new lover yeah they she controlled nothing was shown outside nothing was shown outside neither in her expression in her activity in her movement her body language nothing was shown her parents in law the rishis are there her husband is there everybody is there nobody has any idea what is going on within savitri nothing was shown outside she was still to them the child they knew and loved they her parents in law child they loved the sorry woman they saw not within no change was in her beautiful motion scene a worshiped empress all at once white to serve she was a princess in ashwapati's palace and everybody would go and serve her but now she is serving everybody here you see a worshiped empress all once by to serve she made herself the diligent serf of all knows not spared the labor of broom and jar and well or low gentle tending to the heap of fire of altar and kitchen no light task allowed to other that her woman strength might do see she is sweeping the floor she is carrying out the household work she is pulling the water from the well she is uh, lighting the kitchen fire and all that thing she is doing routinely as if nothing is happening within her nobody has an idea at all in all her act a strange divinity is shown in spite of that into a simplest moment she could bring a oneness again a oneness with us glowing group of light that oneness everybody you see that that is her very character her very nature a lifting up of common acts by love all love was hers and is one heavenly crown bound all to all with her as golden crown bound all to all that oneness is it that is the gate that is the key to the flaming gate of ecstasy but when her grief to the surface pressed to close these thing one grace adjunct of a joy seen meaningless to her in glowing cell or were a brown mechanical and void her daily activities appear to be her like her body is action shared not her will always behind a strange divided life a spirit like a sea of living fire sea of living fire possess a lover and to his body clung one look embrace and god to his threaten to me yeah let's go further up here you are too well she loved to speak a faithful word this is what we are seeing just now too well she loved to speak a faithful word and lay her burden on his happy head on such a one she pressed a surging grief back into her brain to well to dwell within silent unhelped alone but such a one is such a thing and then fall down yeah does in the silent chamber of her soul cloistering her love to live 
with secret grief she secret grief she dwelt like a dumb priest with hidden gods <laughs> god annapeed by the world is offering to them lifting to them a sorrow like frankincense her life the altar herself the sacrifice yeah let's go back to 112.44 now yeah, this is what narad is telling to the mother queen in the book of fate to the end you see he is telling to savitri's mother bring not thy brief and helpless human tears across the fathomless moment of a heart fathomless moment of a heart savitri's heart that knows a single will and god as one don't your human cry human ideas human passion human affection they have no value it can embrace his hostile destiny mean it means that savitri sir it sits apart with grief and fear and facing it sits apart alone without anybody itself affronting adverse fate arm and alone in this enormous world standing apart in the mightiness of a silent spirit's will in the passion of a soul of sacrifice her lonely strength facing the universe affronting fate ask not man's help nor god's she is not going to ask anybody's help ask not man's help nor god they are useless of course men are useless even the gods here sometime one life is charged with us destiny it cries not for succor from the time bound powers alone she is equal to her mighty task intervene not in a strife too great for the o oh, human creature o oh, queen intervene not in a mighty strife too great for the struggle to the for mortal thought to sound is question which nature's rigid found when the soul france knew of god's infinite is too vast thing of a lonely mortal will facing the silence of eternity as a star uncompanioned moves in heaven unastonished by the immensity of space traveling infinity by its own light the great the strongest man they stand alone well this is important the great the strongest when they stand alone savitri was the only person in the whole place there who knew what was going to happen and she had the capacity to hold that knowledge with her you see the great the strongest when they stand alone she knows that she is going to be there alone there you see nobody is going to help her at all you see in fact he says god or men they are not going to help in any way at all a god give in fact this is important also great or strongest when they stand alone yeah that otherwise they others pull them down yeah, yeah. that is precisely the reason why satyavan death is taking place in a remote place away from civilization in a lonely forest under a tree where there is nobody there nobody there nobody only nature soul below and gods above are the witness of that mighty event nature soul below all around and the gods above they are the only witness of that event there is the great the strongest that is why the the whole thing is taking place in a remote lonely place absolute in fact it is important very important had it taken place in the hermitage with all the people around here savitri would not have been able to do her work at all impossible you would have been weeping crying <laughs> all kind of things you see condolences for not to see and savitri would not have been able to do her work at all you see that is why the yogi the occultist has chosen a lonely place that is the power that is the beauty also 
of the original story of Mahabharata. Mahabharata Savitri is described that way. Why she has to do, why he has to die only in the forest there, in a lonely place, under a kingly tree. God given might or being, he therefore, a ray from self solitude of light, the guide, the soul that can live alone with itself, means God. It's lonely universe, he there rendezvous. A day may come when she must stand unhelmed on a dangerous brain to the world's doom and hurl. It can trip this way or that way. Nara is not going to tell how it is going to happen. He is, he is going to say like that only. Carrying the world's future on a lonely brain, carrying the human hope in a heart left a lo uh, left a soul to conquer or fail on a last desperate world alone with death and close to extinctions in her single greatness in that last dire scene, last dire scene, she must cross alone in a perilous bridge in time and reach an apex of world destiny where all is one or all is lost for man. All is one or all is lost. Narada is not going to say this will happen or that will happen. He is keeping both the options there. Obviously, in the tremendous silence, lone and lost of a deciding hour in the world's fate, in her souls climbing beyond mortal time, souls climbing beyond mortal time, that is what is going to happen there now, where she stands soul with death or soul with God, apart upon a silent, desperate spring, alone with the self and death and destiny as on some voice between time and time business, when being must end, or life rebuild its pain, alone she must conquer, or alone must fall. Here again, souls climbing beyond mortal time, that is what Savitri is doing now, you see, at that moment. No human aid can reach her in that hour. Narada has already told, no human reed can reach her in that hour. No armor god stands shining at her side. Nobody is going to come there. Yet, God is Durga is there, the protectress, you see. <laughs> no armor god stands shining at her side. Cry not to heaven, for she alone can see. For this, the silent force came mission down in her the conscious will took human shape. That is what Savitri is. The conscious will took human shape, you see. She only can save herself and save the world, etc., etc. And then Narad departs after making the pronouncement. He spoke and ceased and left the earthly scene. He is going back now to his home in paradise. Away from the strife and suffering, of our mortal world, he turned to the far of blissful home, his paradise of heaven. A brilliant arrow pointing straight to heaven, the luminous body of the eternal seer, assail the purple glory of the noon. So he is living at the purple hour of noon. He is going at the noon hour and his body, his purple glory, is assailing the noon light, you see. So he says, at what hour? He says, this hour, this day, this year, <laughs> everything is fixed. He is living palace at noon, you see. You said this passage where Shobindu repeat alone, the is the last line of Savitri. Yeah, we have got along. You said that. Huh? It is oh yeah, there is a line, alone, that alone word, alone. It is as a line, the last line written by Sri Aurobindo. These are the last lines. What, Nara, what I have read now, just now, Narad, these are the absolutely the last piece of dictation made by Sri Aurobindo around 15th November 1950. A few weeks before you make it. About three weeks before. I said 15th November uh, 1950, around that time. Around that time, you see. Around that time, you see. Yeah, but he, 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 he is leaving, he is leaving and she has to still do it, the supermantle. Yeah. He, 
he was not in the physical body. He had to go and left her alone. He wrote him. Yeah, what, we have, what we have read just now is that, so you see, he has already seen that thing now in the symbol dawn, right in the beginning, you have the parallel descriptions of that thing. So it's already happening there, you see. That is why there is a kind of unity of theme in Savitri. It is not disjointed anywhere. There is a kind of interconnection, harmony of descriptions everywhere, you see. Because it is seen from above and therefore it falls, everything falls in its places, you see. These are absolutely the last lines, see. 72 lines to the Queen Mother. In fact, see the last sentence here. Think not to intercede with the hidden will. Intrude not, twixt her spirit and its, fo its force, but give her to her mighty self and be it. Yeah. She has to do it. Yeah, nothing. So, the last word she to utter is fate. <laughs> in, the, uh, in the dictation of Savitri. But leave her to her mighty self and peace. But uh, you see, even in the 19th, in the, when mother left the physical body, there, yeah. was such, there was such a confusion in the ashram about the ashram. Right. The ashramites. There was such a confusion when mother left her physical body. And even when I came in 81, it was not clear to many people. Did she do it? Did she not do it? Is it done? Was she successful? Was it not successful? Now she left the body. There was a complete confusion. People didn't understand. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't understand what actually she was doing. She, they, they were completely... That is true. No, who would understand, you see? Nobody would understand that. No. That came much later. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand how they can live with a mother and don't understand what she did her whole life. Why the whole yoga, the whole little yoga, why they came to avatars, what happened? For me, this is a this question mark. They are living there with her every day and they have no idea. This is kind of well, uh, actually mother's passing away. Nobody can describe. Yeah, but it was done. Nobody can describe. Everything, everything was done. I mean, we can uh, kind of make certain surmises here and there and that based on her writings and whatnot. But what actually happened, the awful meaning of that thing, nobody knows. We don't know what she did. Before. But one thing is certain that whatever she had done, Whatever future work is to be done, she always said, it is in the will of the Lord. What thou willest, what thou willest. Sakar to will, sakar to will. Always. So, when she has left everything to the will of the Lord, what can we say anything? He has a greater plan, greater uh, way of doing things, carrying things forward. But she has brought it from Mandal. She has brought it down. It was already there. So how could she doubt it? The people will doubt, you see. Now, the uh, people say all kind of things. Now, you see, for instance, there is a statement made by uh, somebody and all that. Many people make that statement. And I think it was started by Udar himself, that uh, Shri Aventu was not a born avatar. He became an author. You know that, no? He yes, became yes, an author. Yes, he became an author. I mean, I mean, it's ridiculous. Mother has not said that anywhere like that at all. Nowhere mother has said that kind of a thing. And if he has become an author, he became an author. He was not born an author. He became an author. The question will arise, when did it happen? <laughs> Give me the date. <laughs> Otherwise, it's pointless to say. It's pointless to say otherwise, you see. He became the author, tell me, at this event, in this manner, it happened. So, the people, forget about people, you see. Forget about people, you go entirely by your own uh, intuition, by your own inner perception, and uh, live in that. 
go entirely by your inner perception, you see. 